والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers And in particular on the last of them all The Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam As we address you there in London From the studio of the Islamic Broadcasting Network of Trinidad and Tobago And we thank them for so kindly offering their facilities For me to be able to make this broadcast to you there at the conference uh, On the art of critical thinking I greet my fellow presenters at this conference And also you the audience brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The Quran in at least a dozen in places in the Quran has informed us that it has, this book has been sent for a people liqawmi yatafakkaroon for a people who engage in fikr fikr is not just thinking no fikr is pondering and reflecting trying to get to the essence of things It's not just the pursuit of knowledge. And the Quran has been sent for a people who ponder and who reflect to seek to get to the essence of things. If we do not engage in that exercise of pondering and reflecting, critical thinking, then we pay a price. In uh, Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the people who live a heedless life. A people for whom the signs of Allah are constantly unfolding in the world and they pass by heedlessly. And Allah gives a warning to these people who would not think the way they ought to think. And he says, بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And this is Surah Al-A'raf. He says, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Large numbers of mankind, large numbers of the jinn are assigned to the hellfire. Why? لَهُمْ كُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَرُونَ they have hearts and they do not use their hearts for pursuing knowledge and they have eyes but they do not see and they have ears but they do not hear these people are like cattle even with a PhD from MIT and Allah says they're just like cattle but whom adult rather they are more misguided than cattle and so there is a relationship between true guidance living a way of life in which you walk on Sirat al mustaqim and the capacity to think clearly to think critically. Ulaika humul ghafilun. These are the ones who are living a life that is heedless. And so, if we do not acquire the capacity to think critically, the price we can pay is Jahannam. There are many in the world like that today. You know them. They consider the modern feminist revolution to be something positive, to be something progressive. And what Islam has to offer concerning women and their role and status and function in society to be the opposite. 
they are a people who consider the modern secular state, the modern republican state, and that's what they are, all of them, with its constitutional secularism, with its electoral politics, participation elections, that this is something positive, a positive development in the world, which has come from modern Western civilization. It is something progressive. And Islam's uh, Khilafah state, that's backwardness. That's the opposite. There are people who consider the modern money that we use. You know it, the British sterling pound and the US dollar, and the paper money and plastic and electronic money and the banking system that capitalizes on it, that this is something positive. This is a sign of progress. And Islam's dinar and dirham, who wants that? The world has no progress beyond that. That's backwardness. This is, these are signs of a people who lack the capacity to think creatively to think critically. Does the Quran teach us how to think properly, how to think positively, how to think critically? Yes, it does. We cannot, in this brief address, uh, attempt to explain the totality of Islam's epistemology, but in subsequent lectures, inshallah, we can enlarge upon the scope of our presentation. But for today, let's go to one passage of the Quran. It came down one night. It is in Surah to Ali Imran. And the next morning in the masjid, as Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam narrated and recited what was revealed during the night, he was weeping. He was weeping. So powerful was this passage which came down in the Quran which taught us how to think properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ard. Surely in the nature and in the constitution and creation of the parallel universes, the samawat, and the material universe, the ard, there are signs for a people who ponder and reflect. وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Surely in the alternation of night and of day, of light and of darkness, there are signs for a people who ponder and who reflect. What are these signs? Let's take one of them, only one. As we look up in the sky, we see the stars. They appear to the heedless, untrained eye and mind to be just a jumble. But Allah says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِحِ And we have surely ordained the sky, the lowest sky, with lamps. Why does he use the word lamp? A lamp is something which provides light so we can see where to go. That's what a lamp does. And these stars up there are lamps. In other words, the stars in the sky are there in order for us to know how to go, where to go. Oh yes, when you're in the sea and you are a on a boat in the sea, and you want to know which direction to go, you look up in the sky. The untrained eye would look at all those stars in the sky, and they appear to be unrelated to each other. But the trained eye, the one who thinks and ponders and reflects, would study the stars in the sky and would see that they are all interrelated, interconnected. And as a consequence of learning the whole, seeing the whole picture, seeing how the stars are connected to each other, 
you'll be able to direct attention to direction. In which direction should I travel? And so you're able to navigate by looking up in the stars, at the stars. This is one of the signs from Allah that these stars are not placed there by accident. Proper thinking, creative thinking, critical thinking is therefore the capacity to see relationships between things in order to be able to encompass them as a totality. Creative and critical thinking does not focus on one isolated instance, one isolated event, one isolated verse of the Quran, one isolated hadith on Gog and Magog, for example. And on the basis of that one event, one instance, one verse, one hadith, you attempt to derive meaning, and you've understood now the totality? What nonsense. And precisely, it is that nonsense which has landed us in the predicament in which we are today. As we look again at the stars above, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to look not only at the stars, but the moon and the sun and the firmament above and look at the furniture of the earth below and you see that everything functions harmoniously and everything is pregnant with truth. Allah created everything with truth. And therefore there is harmony in all that pertains to truth. Critical thinking, the capacity to think critically, means that you must recognize harmony, lack or no defects whatsoever in all matters pertaining to what has come from Allah, the creation of the heavens and of the earth. Similarly, when you turn to the process of history, to the historical process, as truth moves through history and you seek to interpret truth moving through history, again, you will look for harmony. You will look for that which brings a total picture into being that is meaningful and harmonious and integrated. Now you are becoming a thinker. And when you locate something which is in conflict with all the rest of what you have, something which cannot be integrated harmoniously, ah, now you understand that you may be looking at a monstrous lie parading as truth. Allah warns them in the Quran. وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ Do not take truth and clothe it in the garments of falsehood. وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقِّ And do not conceal the truth. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ When you know it is the truth. We will never become thinkers unless and until we develop the capacity to first of all recognize the harmony of the total data that we have pertaining to truth, and then to recognize the discrepancy, that which is inconsistent with the rest of the data, and that therefore which is a lie, that is therefore which is falsehood dressed up as truth. And then we're able to remove falsehood and locate that which is truth and locate that which 